All right, so welcome back. We're still here on the fourth lesson, and we are going to talk a little bit more about the formation of the listing contract. The formation of this contract. Once again, remember that that formation is between the listing agent and the seller when this contract gets formed. It's between the listing agent and the seller. It is actually an employment contract between the two parties. It is not a real estate contract. This contract gets formed between the two people and it is then executed, meaning signed, to make sure that both parties are doing entering into this contract voluntarily and of their own free will, and that they all meet all the parties. They all meet all the uh, proper requirements for a contract. <clears throat> so, what agency is conferred? And we talked a minute ago that the, you, it is conferred is special agency and special agency allows an agent to market the property for sale and it also explains what the seller's requirements are in this as far as allowing the agent to show the property it, it makes sure the seller is truthful and forthright about the condition of the property so all the disclosure things are in there so all of these things are in there and give each party's responsibility as what they are supposed to do. Okay. Um, there could be general agency that would be conferred. And these are for actually property managers. All right. So we're going to just take a side note and delve out of the listing agent for a second. It could be a property manager. That would confer general agency. And what does actually general agency mean? No, this is the part where you are supposed to answer. And I know what you're thinking. You're driving down the road listening to me. And now all of a sudden you're talking to the radio and you know the people beside you are looking at you like going, Man, this dude's crazy because not only is he listening to it, he's talking to it. General agency allows you to do multiple items for your client at a time, like maybe enter into lawn care contract, maybe in a screen tenants, collect rent, go to the bank, pay bills. Um, so let's put this down here. Special agency would be for a realtor. General would be a property manager. The reason I wanted to touch on that is to realize that you guys can actually be both of these things literally at the same time. You can be a listing agent for one client and you can be a property manager over here for another client. So you can have multiple agencies at the same time or multiple agents. Uh, there's a third one that maybe we should touch on. Uh, remember, it's called the universal agent. We've mentioned this before. You think of it as the POA. This allows you to do multiple things. I'm actually a POA for my parent, my mother, who's still living. I'm actually a property manager for some of the companies we manage. And obviously, we are both a listing agent and a selling agent for our buyers and sellers. So you can have multiple agencies at the same time with different people uh, so that you can obviously increase your business and things like that. Uh, fourth lesson, continuing on, here's the most important thing that I found out. Dude, doesn't that look like Paul Walker to you? I don't know, maybe this was his early years when he needed something to do. So how do you figure out the list price. How do you guys figure out the list price? Well, there's a couple different methods that can be used to figure out the list price. Now, one of the things you need to talk about 
is the fact is that you do not figure the list price. This person figures the list price. Actually, that's probably not even correct because this looks like he's probably dealing more with the buyer. But let's say for the sake of this scenario that he's doing the pre-closing <clears throat> or the, the pre-closing listing or the pre-listing and he's showing the seller. So we're going to write into here just so that we all understand for the purpose of this slide that Paul Walker here is in fact also the seller and he's showing him the agents doing his job and showing him some of the cool parts to the house, okay? <clears throat> so there are several ways to determine the listing price. There is this whole comparative market analysis or CMA that will allow you to at least get a starting point to show you the value of the range for your houses in the neighborhood. So let's go to a side note and talk about a question. <clears throat> so my question to you is when dealing with CMAs, there's always a problem that I want to talk about, and this might be the best time as any, is when you guys, you know what? I don't know if that, that's the best time or not, because we're going to talk about purchase agreements later. So we'll deal that question here in just a minute. So let's talk about CMAs. CMAs are the comps, and the thing that you need to remember with the comps is that they are actually a range of values that 140 to 145 that is what you get you do not come back and give a value that is called an appraisal and you are not a licensed appraiser unless of course you are and that's a whole different story all right now that is one way to determine the value or the at least the listing price or at least a range to start. So typically, if you've got some experience, which you probably do by now, you know that what happens. You go in there and you do your CMA and in your listing, they'll, they say, hey, I wanna, want you to list our house. So you come back with a CMA in that range of 140 to 145. And where does the client tell you they wanna start? <laughs> Uh, excuse me, sir, maybe you didn't understand the whole point of what I was just talking about. That's what this is. No, that, that's funny, but it's actually not funny if you've done business before. Um, you know that that's typically what happens. Oh, well, yeah, but that's Susie's house, and I'm a much better housekeeper than Sharon down the street, which I literally have had. I had a lady tell me that, that her neighbor's house sold for X, but she was a much better housekeeper, so her house probably should be valued a little bit more. I heard you guys laughing through the speakers. The second way that they could determine what the listing price is, is what do I owe? What do I owe? You know, I owe this amount of money, and I really just need to get out of trouble with the bank and do pay it off, pay the closing cost, pay you as the agent and walk away, all right? So that is a second way that you can determine what a person owes. Uh, what I'd like to do is a little math problem to help talk about this so we can go over this. So here's my prototypical house and they owe a hundred thousand dollars and they come to you and say Raymond I want to pay the bank off and I want to literally walk away what is the minimum list price minimum list price they can list the property at you say okay well let's do some math 
you owe 100000 exactly. I do the math and realize, or I, in my professionalism, I know that you've got 1500 in closing costs. And my boss, Raymond, is quite the pain in the butt. He wants us to charge a 7% commission. So what I want to ask you real quick is to hit the pause button and do this math and come back and tell me the answer to this question. I know that some of you probably came up with this answer is a very common answer. All right. I am here to tell you that that answer is absolutely wrong. And this is a very hard, tricky math problem to actually explain. You cannot take 7% of this number and add it on top and get that number back. What you really need to do is do this. So let me ask you a question. At closing, we know that we are going to go and get a pile of money. Here's our pile of money. Um, that pile of money represents the amount of money that needs to be sold uh, to cover that. Now, I'm going to ask you, of this pile of money, what should we call it? Well, here comes that algebra that you guys always hated that you thought, oh, I'll never use. Well. The common answer, obviously, is X. That's what we use in the algebraic form, is X is the amount of money that we're trying to solve for. What is that pile of money? Now, we know that pile of money has got to pay all of her bills. So it's very easy to see right out of the gate that 7% of that money is going to go over to Raymond because that is the commission I charged. So 7% of that money is gone. So that pile of money now leaves her what? 93% of that. And that pile of money here has to equal all of the bills that she has. Well, she's paid us, so we took that out. So what bills are left? Well, here's what bills are left. She has the $100,000. Plus, she's got the 1500 in closing, so therefore, she has to pay that off. All right? So, <clears throat> we know that that total, now, I really want to just have 1x, not 0.93x. So, math tells me if I take any number divided by itself, that number goes away, and I can do that as long as I do the same thing on both sides. And if you do this math, you find out it is 109, 139. That would be the minimum list price that you could list the property at to solve and pay off this guy's issue of the $100,000 house. If you didn't get that math, feel free to email me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. All right. <clears throat> so the second way that you could potentially determine the list price is where the agent says, what do I want? I want a million dollars. You know, so there are three different ways to determine the list price. The key to this whole thing as you, as the agent, do not determine the list price. You could help them. You could guide them in certain directions by using these three items. But the seller is the one that ultimately determines the list price. And if you don't like the list price, let's say you do that whole, oh, it's worth 140 to 145. And they come back and say, I want to list it at 156 because I know the market's hot right now. You, as the obedience, which is one of your fiduciary obligations, have only really two choices. One is you will ultimately list it at the price they tell you to list it at, 
or you won't take the listing at all and just say, sorry, I don't think I can help you. You cannot make a decision. You can't get back to the office later and go, you know, they were completely wrong. I'm going to go ahead and list it at this price. So make sure you understand and help guide them through the process. But it's the seller that actually will determine the listing price that they start at. All right. So that's the key to this. Now let's take a small break and come back and talk about the terms of the listing agreement. <laughs> 